can't seem to rub two cents together but beauty is life? I feel you. Whether you're a student or just terrible at making your budget last till the next payday, today we're talking the skincare and K-beauty essentials to use in your routine without going broke in the process. Welcome to The Korean Beauty Show, where we're talking all things Korean skincare, makeup and more. If you want to learn about the hottest trending products and ingredients straight from South Korea, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, we'll be diving in to take a look at the latest trends, as well as all the tips and tricks you need to perfect your K-beauty routine. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, professional K-beauty expert and founder of Korean beauty platform Style Story. back on today's episode of the korean beauty show podcast we're talking beauty on a budget times are tough and not everyone has the money up their sleeves for bougie beauty buys which is why today i'm running through my top tricks for identifying what you need how to stop wasting products and which products to scrimp and save on but first if we haven't met already I am Lauren Lee, the founder of Style Story, an online K-beauty platform where you can shop and explore the world of Korean beauty. Today's show is brought to you by the brand new Jellico Bubble Tea Steam Cream, the deliciously creamy moisturizer that's a drink for your skin. Bubble Tea Steam Cream features super ingredients niacinamide, vitamin E, beta-glucan, pearl, squalane, sodium hyaluronate, panthenol, arginine, adenosine, and elantoin. Save 10% off your Jellico Bubble Tea Steam Cream with the code PODCAST. Jump over to stylestory.com.au where bubble tea is now being served. So on to my tips for beauty saving. I've got a couple of different ones for you guys, but the first one to start things off is to identify your must-have products. Before you go out and purchase hashtag all the products, take stock of what it is you really need and then allocate your budget there. So if your cleanser has run out, it kind of makes sense to budget for a new one rather than racing out to buy Laneige's eighth release lip mask flavor. (laughs) Similarly, if your skin is suffering from a bout of acne or perhaps pigmentation, give yourself a bit of leeway to spend there so you can treat these issues with like a specialized serum or a cream. Now my number two tip, if you're on a beauty budget, is to use up your old products before you buy new ones. So we are all a little bit guilty of this. There's a shiny new product on the gram and now it's on your skincare shelf. The problem is you already had another cleanser or toner or serum opened. So if you're trying to watch your wallet, make sure that you're only buying the products you actually need, ideally by replacing new for old. So some people call this a no buy period, but I'm just going to call it good sense. The other thing to remember when it comes to using up your old products first is that most skincare products have a shelf life of between 6 to 12 months after they've been opened. So if you've got multiple types of the same product on the go at once, this can pretty quickly lead to wastage and having to throw out products. This brings me to my number three tip, which is to condense your routine where you can. So having a 12-step routine is all fine and good, but if you can't get there without sidetracking your budget, then condensing your steps is a really good way to go about it. Now, one of the easiest ways I have found to do this is to opt for products that contain either two or more products in a single product, because that means you get twice the mileage without having to give up any of the benefits to your skin. So one of my favorites for this is the Seven Skins Toners because they eliminate the need basically for multiple products. And that's because you are getting all the hydration and things that you need from a single product. So Pyong Kang Yil's Essence Toner is a really good one for this, especially if you're on a budget. It's definitely on the cheaper side and it basically doubles as your toner, essence and serum in one routine. So that's a hot tip for trying to condense your skincare routine. 
Now, my tip number four is know what skincare to splurge on. So if you do need to allocate funds across your beauty routine because you cannot afford to buy all the things, then my tip would be to allocate your skincare budget to serums. If you're going to spend a little bit more, that is the product that I would spend it on. And this is the reason. Serums are made with the smallest molecules, and that helps them to penetrate and enter the skin on a deeper level and help your cells to actually create that change. And this is why serums do tend to be pricier. The technology behind them is a little bit more difficult for brands to come up with. And the other thing is this, there is a difference between cheaper serums and the more expensive ones. And that is that the cheaper ones are often made with a lot of filler ingredient. So in my opinion, it does make sense to splurge a little bit more on a serum if you only have a certain amount of money to go around. So some of the serums that I love that I think are still really good bang for buck are Tose Wong's Propolis Sparkle Ample, then Misha's Time Revolution Ample, and also April B's Idebenone Ample Serum. These are all really good ones that won't break the bank, but are going to be a little bit more expensive than your basic skincare products like your cleanser and your toner. Now, my number five tip is to grab a beauty bargain. So whether it's stocking up on items on sale or sniffing out the bang for buck deals, Grabbing a bargain is the best way, and luckily K-Beauty is full of them. So here are a few of my favorite K-Beauty bargains under $20 that will help balance the budget and stretch your dollar a little further. Number one is Innisfree's No Sebum Mineral Pact. So if you're looking for something to help keep the shine and oiliness at bay, then this little pack is super handy. It's one of Innisfree's best-selling products, and it contains a sebum controlling powder, and it won't break the bank. It's infused with jeju minerals and mint extracts, and basically what it does is it helps to set your makeup, and you can also touch up on the go throughout the day. You can even use it in your hair instead of other products to help sort of mattify your hair if you are prone to oily hair. So I'm calling that one a total bang for buck because it's usually under $15 and it lasts for ages as well, and it comes in its own little compact too. The second one is Subi's Perfect Pimple Patch, and this is a premium grade hydrocolloid pimple patch that helps suck up all the gunk in pimples. So the reason I love these ones is because they are super, super sticky, and that means that they won't fall off. So a lot of the, I guess, really cheap pimple patches, the problem is when you put them on at night and then you go to bed, you wake up in the morning and you'll find it on your pillow, which is not exactly where it needs to be. So going for something that is super thin, but also highly adhesive is just better bang for buck because it means that you can get the you know proper treatment from your pimple patch and you don't have to just throw out a perfectly good patch, which is such a waste and I hate it when that happens to me. Now, another product, again from Innisfree, are you sensing a little bit of a theme here, (laughs) is the Jeju Volcanic Pore Clay Mask. Now, this is their version of a clay mask that is made from Jeju Volcanic Lava, and it's famous for its deep cleansing and purifying properties. So they say that it's a three-in-one product because they say that it can be used as either a spot treatment where you pop it on a pimple overnight, just like on the pimple, not over your whole face, and then wash the clay off in the morning. And then you can also use it to treat specific areas that get a little bit oily, like for example, your nose and forehead and T-zone throughout the week. Or you can also use it how it's intended to be used by most other companies, which is You basically apply it over your entire face uh, and then wash it off when the product hardens. So Innisfree has some really great cheap and cheerful beauty buys and I think it's a really solid entry level Korean beauty brand. If you're just getting started with Korean beauty, Innisfree is nice and accessible I think and it has just a lot of cheap and cheerful products so I'm going to call them a budget friendly K-beauty brand. COSRX, their low pH cleanser, if you have oily or acne prone skin, then this is a real beauty steal. It is 
has a perfectly balanced pH of 5.5, which is really important for acne prone skin because it helps to preserve your skin's acid mantle. And it is just a perfect texture and consistency if you are on the oilier side. So as a general, I guess, rule, I would say that the cheap and cheerful, in inverted commas, K-Beauty brands are obviously going to be your Innisfree, your Benton, Beauty of Joson, Vanilla, um, and COSRX. Although some of COSRX's newer products are significantly pricier <laughs> than their earlier releases. So just keep an eye on that. They're sort of redoing their old ones one by one and coming out with much more expensive ones that are pretty much exactly the same as the original ones. So COSRX might be moving up more into that mid here, I think, but historically they have been a, uh, quite a cheap brand. And then another brand that I love that I think is completely underrated is JJ Young by Cowleon Lab. Now Cowleon Lab is actually the same company that makes the Cowleon brand, which is stocked in Sephora. And some of the Cowleon products are quite expensive, but this is sort of a more budget friendly line that they have introduced that is super similar to their original Cowleon products, which are all for the pores to clear out any congestion, breakouts and things like that in the pores. So I think this brand is a veritable steal because it's basically giving you the same high quality pore refining products that are stocked in Sephora, just sort of under a different brand name. So that is my top tips for K-Beauty on a budget. Now, before we go today, I am going to read out one of the lovely reviews that was left by one of the podcast listeners. And this one says, best podcast for a K-Beauty beginner. I've discovered Lauren on Instagram and was so excited about her podcast. I love listening to her helpful tips while going on walks. I'm a newbie in K-Beauty and appreciate all of Lauren's helpful tips. Her advice has helped me select a few starter products to address my compromised skin barrier and hyperpigmentation. Five days in and my skin is glowing. Thank you. P.S. Love hearing a fellow Aussie girl doing great things overseas. Go Lauren. Thank you very much. Go you. I'm so happy to hear that five days in has already made a difference to your skin. Guys, I love to hear what you think about the podcast and leaving your review also does help other people find us so that we can spread the K-beauty love. So please do pop in and leave a review if you're on Apple iTunes. Otherwise, you can find Style Story on Facebook and you can leave your review there because it, it's, um, well, for one, I, it's, I'm loving reading them. So <laughs> that's just a little bit of a selfish reason, but also it really does help other people find the show. So until next week, I will talk to you next Tuesday. Bye.